but we can all hold hands around the campfire some other time. Right now, we've got to show you different. So recently, I decided to rewatch the entire High School Musical trilogy. I was really fascinated by a recent recontextualization of one character in particular from the franchise, and that is Sharpe Evans. She's the antagonist of all three movies, at least that's the way she was depicted. Although recently, there has been more of a reframing around her character, a lot more people now feel that Sharpe was actually the unsung hero of the High School Musical franchise, and that she wasn't really the antagonist, just a victim of circumstance. So now, looking back, more people have begun to feel that Gabriella and Troy were the true villains of the series, and that they actually denied Sharpay, a character whose whole passion is the performing arts, an opportunity to shine. And you know me, if there's one thing I'm gonna do is dissect and analyze a character from a children's program from over a decade ago, because it's fun. So my initial instinct was actually to push back against this idea. I think a lot of people obviously aren't spending most of their time re-watching movies from when they were kids, so I think it's easier when we grow up to have a different understanding and interpretation of things we watch when you were younger. But that also makes it a lot easier to misrepresent depictions that we've seen. Also, people love a good mean girl, so much so that they'll justify her actions no matter how terrible they are. So that might also be what's at play here. We love Sharpay, so we don't want her to be the bad guy. But I'm nothing if not fair, so I actually want to revisit the High School Musical trilogy to see if this new representation of Sharpay's character is actually valid. Did we just blindly think Sharpay was the bad guy because the movie said so and our tiny brains just followed along? Or is this new recontextualization of her character just adults now misrepresenting a character just because they like her? Brief history. So the idea of High School Musical actually came out of some experiments Disney Channel was having with some of their shows. They produced an entire musical episode of Even Steve a show I never watched, and that's a Raven. And those episodes and the music from those episodes performed well. This gave Disney the idea and the confidence to produce an entire musical set in high school, and thus High School Musical was born. The franchise was really popular, especially the music. The first movie even won two Emmys, and one for choreography, which honestly super well deserved. Like, the choreography for the first two movies are my favorite. The franchise fully entered the zeitgeist and became a cultural staple. So in revisiting these movies, I wanted to pay extra close attention to Sharpay's character. See how she's portrayed and finally definitively answer the question, was she a villain or a victim? So for these longer analysis videos, I like to divide the chapters and give them an appropriate name based on what we're talking about, but I couldn't for the life of me think of anything good for this one, so I'm just gonna name each chapter after the movies. Great! Good. High School Musical. So we start off the first movie with a faded meeting between Troy and Gabriella. The movie wastes absolutely no time letting us know what kind of character archetypes these two are. Gabriella is at a party reading a book, okay, and Troy is spending his time practicing basketball with his dad. So very early on, we get the jock and bookworm narrative shoved in. Gabriella and Troy are pushed into performing a karaoke song together, and this guy does some impressive foreshadowing. Someday you guys might thank me for this. Or not. They sing Start of Something New, and I gotta tell you, it's my first time hearing these songs in a long while. They're actually really good. Like, this bridge on this song goes crazy for absolutely no reason. So anyways, after killing their performance together, they exchange numbers with the hopes of meeting up soon. And then Gabriella performs a magic trick. Where do you live? <laughs> Why did she disappear? She could have at least said bye. Anyways. Now we're back at East High, where we see just how popular Troy Bolton is. He's a big man on campus and everybody just absolutely loves him. And we see Sharpay for the first time. And in her brief introduction, we can already tell she's a little full of herself. And Chad makes this one-off joke. You know she probably spent the holidays where she always does? How's that? Shopping for mirrors. Oh! Like, was that supposed to be an insult? She likes looking at herself. Okay. We then see that Gabriella is also attending East High. She's transferring schools and is having anxiety about being the weird genius girl at a new school. During homeroom, we first hear mentions of the spring musicale. Check the sign-up sheets in the lobby for new activities, Mr. Bolton, especially our winter musicale. And that the audition sheets would be up soon for people to sign up. I also just love that the theater teacher's whole character is theater. Like she eats, sleeps, and breathes theater. Mr. Danforth, this is a place of learning, not a hockey arena. Is that a basketball? I wouldn't know, because I only do theater. Boy. They're really playing up the archetypes, and you know what? I actually like it. I think it's funny. So Gabriella enters her new homeroom, and Troy seems to recognize her, but isn't sure if it's actually her. So he calls her phone, and I'm like, what are you doing? You could just wait until after class to see if it's her. Then everyone gets in trouble because everyone checks to see if it's their phone, and they all get detention. Anyways, Troy and Gabriella reunite, and Troy is very embarrassed about the fact that he can sing, so he doesn't want anyone to know about the karaoke. 
but he does ask Gabriela if she's going to sign up for the musical. Gabriela says she's not really interested because she wants to get to know the school before doing any extracurriculars, but Sharpay is definitely signing up. We can see more that Sharpay is not only very active in theater, but she also stars in all of the plays alongside her brother, so theater and performing are her thing, to the point where she expects to always be the lead. Still at that point, Troy and Gabriela say they aren't interested, so it's fine. We also see that Sharpay kinda has a little crush on Troy, but it's very one-sided. Afterwards, Troy confides in Chad, his best friend, that he's contemplating during the school musical, though he passes it off as it just being good for extra credit. Chad shuts down that idea immediately, saying that he doesn't think it would be a good idea for Troy to run around and sing and dance to show tunes, to which the entire team immediately starts singing and dancing to a show tune. Wait a minute. Whose voice is that? So I noticed that Zac Efron isn't doing his own singing. Apparently the role of Troy was written with a tenor in mind and Zac Efron is a baritone, so he couldn't do most of the songs. So they had Drew Seeley, who also auditioned for the role, sing all of the songs. Zach did some parts, like the beginning and ending of some songs, but for the most part, we're hearing Drew Seeley. I just think it's funny that they wouldn't hire him to play the role, but still use his voice. Anyways, the whole song is about Troy being torn between wanting to pursue the musical and playing basketball, which like, I guess, if you say so. I don't know, I'm having trouble buying that Troy is that interested in the musical, but whatever. Anyways, Sharpay starts to size up with Gabriella to find out more about what the deal is with her and Troy, and we get more proof of just how brainy and smart Gabriella is. Shouldn't the second equation read 16 over pi? 16 over pi? That's quite impossible. Why was the teacher being so snobby about this? You probably just wrote it down wrong. Calm down. Troy again hovers around the sign-up list, still contemplating whether or not he should join the musical. Sharpay decides to do some research on her potential competition because she wants to make sure that she gets the lead as always. So Sharpay finds out that Gabriella is a super smart genius and decides to submit her in an extracurricular that would prevent her from participating in the school musical. And I'm not sure why. At that point, Gabriella already said she's not interested and that she wasn't going to do any extracurricular so she could get a better feel of the school first. So I don't get why Sharpay is even threatened at that point, but I guess it could be a preemptive strike just to ensure that she absolutely gets to lead. So I guess that was Sharpay's first real overstep. You know, not really insidious, very calculated and conniving, but I wouldn't say straight up villain shit, you know? She just overstepped her boundaries. And it worked. Gabriella got roped in to join the math club. The Decathlon? I don't know, one of those smarty clubs. Troy's dad and coach notices Troy and Chad miss their training, and he's really, really upset about it. What the heck are those two doing in a tree? So he takes it to the principal and advocates for them to not miss training for detention because they have a really huge game coming up. And I just love the juxtaposition between Mrs. Darvis and Coach Bolton because their whole personality revolves around their prospective interests. Like Mrs. Darvis's whole character revolves around theater, so much so that she has no idea what sports are and how they work. And Coach Bolton's whole identity also solely revolves around basketball. I love it. The principal is definitely a little bit more biased towards the coach and sports though. And honestly, this was definitely how it worked at my school. Gabriela is still deciding on whether or not to join the decathlon because she's still really committed to not doing any extracurricular until she figures out the school. Her new BFF Taylor though really thinks she's a good fit and thinks sports and Troy Bolton are beneath her. Unless you'd rather sit with the cheerleaders and discuss the importance of her male beds. My male beds are history. <laughs> <laughs> They're really not like other girls guys. Troy tries to confide in his dad about his growing interest in pursuing theater. I'm sorry. I still don't get why he's so torn up about it. I really don't get why Troy is that interested to do theater, because liking singing doesn't necessarily mean that you like doing musicals. Like, I can understand him being interested in singing, but what exactly is it about musical theater that he's so interested in? Especially because he's not just interested because of Gabriella, because she already said she's not going to do it, so why does he care so much? I don't get it, and neither does his dad. Did you ever think about trying something new, but we're afraid of what your friends might think? You're like, what left? God, I just love that they're fully these archetypes and seemingly have no interest in absolutely nothing else. Like, these aren't nuanced characters. They are fully and completely what they do, and Coach Bolton is completely basketball. The day of auditions roll around, and Troy is still deciding on whether or not to audition, so he sneaks off from Chad to go to the audition. He even was able to evade his dad. This kid is low-key a magician, cause what the hell? Also, I've been trying to figure out what class this is. Is it engineering? It looks like they're working on cars. Or does this school just also have a mechanical shop? This school is actually so well financed. Also, look at this theater. Look at those lights. Like, these are professional lighting equipment. I know Mrs. Darbus says that the school pays more attention to sports, 
but it really doesn't seem like the theater department is starved for money. That this is actually an insane size for a high school theater. They could actually host professional stage shows in this theater. Were the theaters in your guys' high school this great? Because I don't know why Mrs. Doris would really be mad. Seems like the school gives every department a good amount of investment. So anyways, the auditions start and they show us a bunch of terrible auditions to further show how amazing our stars auditions would be. Which is honestly pretty cliche, but for good reason. It works. Except for this guy who for some reason did a ballet audition when they were supposed to be auditioning with a song. Honestly, this was my favorite bad audition. I just know they were high as hell. Gabriella turns up for the audition and she's considering auditioning too. But before they do, Sharpie and Ryan do their audition and they did a more upbeat tempo version of the song. And honestly, it was really, really good. I'm sorry, they absolutely killed it. But I also recognize that I'm a person who loves dramatics and theatrics, so this was right up my alley. They had choreo, flips, jazz squares, and their own mics and instrumentation. Like, this is what every audition should be. I can see why they normally get the lead roles in every show. Sharpie gave a really nasty talking to Kelsey though after she suggested they do a more stripped down version of the song. Honestly, yeah, she's really mean here for no reason. She really snapped at Kelsey and it shows just how egotistical Sharpie can be. Also, I never realized this growing up, but Kelsey wrote the whole musical. She wrote and composed all of these songs. That's crazy. She's easily the most talented person at this school. This girl wrote a whole musical at age, what, 15? Was that just a thing kids did in high school? Because at my school, we just did already popular musicals. We never had a student write one themselves and have the school produce it. That's crazy. Anyways, Gabriella decides to audition, but Mrs. Darvis is a stickler for time, so they miss their chance, so she doesn't allow them to audition, but Troy and Gabriella sing the song the way it was supposed to be sang with Kelsey, and honestly, this version isn't bad at all. I still think I prefer Sharpay's version. There are certain songs that work better up-tempo, and I think this is one of them. Sharpay made the right choice making changes to it. Still, I did think Troy and Gabriella's version were actually pretty good. Anyways, Mrs. Darvis heard them singing and agrees to allow them to audition at a callback, and for my ninth theater review, Viewers. A callback is essentially a second round of auditions, so Gabriella and Troy now have to audition against Sharpay and Ryan for the lead roles in the musical. And let me tell you, the announcement of these callbacks brings the whole school to a complete stop. Sharpay is obviously not happy about this. For the first time ever, she actually has some real competition against getting the lead role in the musical. How dare she sign up? I've already picked out the colors for my dressing room! Wait, they get their own dressing rooms? How big is this school? Okay, this has to be like an elite private institution because there's just no way. Troy's friends are also not happy to hear about this and the whole school goes through a whole uproar because Troy went against the status quo and has encouraged other people to go against it too. But it at least got us this moment. <laughs> Telling the black kid to stick to basketball? It's too funny. But then also this moment. Hip hop is my passion. I love to pop and lock and jam and break. Is that even legal? This school is racist as hell. Is that legal? Why are they so anti-black? Also, this was the best part of the song to me. This guy was really killing it with the vocals. Dude, there's no explanation for this awesome sensation, but I'm ready to let it fly. Anyways, Sharpie gets dumped on by Gabriello, which was an accident, but that only further riles her up against them and everyone trying to bring the musical. She tells Mrs. Darbus that Troy's involvement in the musical is some master plan to undermine the performing arts, so Mrs. Darbus decides to investigate this herself. She confronts Coach Bolton, who at that point Point, had no idea that Troy auditioned to be in the school play. Gabriella is still on the fence about the musical and Taylor warns her to be careful because Sharpie has always gotten the lead and would undoubtedly do anything to make sure she gets it again. If that girl could figure out a way to play both Romeo and Juliet, her own brother would be used out of a job. Wait, what? Okay, we're just gonna skip past the incest joke. Troy leaves Gabriella a note to meet him so they could talk. He confides in her about the overwhelming expectation he gets from his parents and his friends. He wants to be more than just the basketball guy, and Gabriella wants to be more than just the brainy genius girl. She says that singing with him makes her feel like when they were kids, and so they decide to take the audition seriously and begin rehearsing. Sharpe and Ryan spy on them, which... I don't know why, because they already know they're up for it, so I don't know. Also, is Sharpay just blind? How did she miss that? Anyways, Troy putting more time and effort into the musical takes away from his commitment to basketball and the team, which is really problematic for the team and his dad. His dad wants him to forget the singing and focus on basketball, and then we get this really great moment. But you're a playmaker, not a singer. Hey. Did you ever think maybe I could be both? <laughs> which is just 
Just perfect. Chad hatches a scheme to keep Troy from participating in the musical. He also gets Taylor's help. And I don't know, I was a kid in the early 2000s, so maybe things were just really different back then. But when I was in high school, if the star athlete was also a good singer, that would just cement their place as the coolest person in the school. Like, in 2016, a kid that's good at sports and singing and dancing would just be that much more well-liked. But, you know, this was a different time, so I guess there was a lot more at stake for Troy. So Chad's plan, which is just a really terrible plan, like, he took three to come up with this. He gets Troy in the locker room to talk about how much more he cares about basketball than the musical, and he doesn't really care about singing or Gabriello. Meanwhile, they're live streaming this whole conversation to a laptop that Taylor set up and shows Gabriella. I'm sorry, this plan sucks. Also, why wouldn't Gabriella just immediately question how they were able to even get this footage? Like, setting up a camera in the boys' locker room is kinda creepy. Also, I don't get why Taylor even helped them. Like, how does Gabriella participating in the school musical affect them and what they have going on in any way. We at least see that Troy's interest in the musical hurts his performance and his attention in basketball, so I get why the team doesn't want him to do it, but why do these people care? Let Gabriella have her fun. Also, this was just so mean. Like, you brought your best friends to tears all because of what? Why is this such a big deal? We talk a lot about Sharpay and how mean and evil she was, but these guys were kind of the villains of this movie. I don't know. Sharpay didn't even have anything to do with this plan whatsoever. But you know what? If it all had to happen for us to get this absolute banger of a song... then so be it. I think a lot of people actually don't like this song, but I'm sorry, I like it. It's just so good and melodramatic, and for whatever reason, I remember her going down this staircase and wearing that ridiculous belt. Also, what was this school's yearly budget? Like, this is actually getting ridiculous. Gabriela blows off Troy, and this really affects him and he loses his game, and he can't focus anymore, and Gabriela also gets really sad about the whole situation, and the dynamic duo realizes they made a mistake. I honestly don't know how they expected this to go any other way. They both come clean to Troy and Gabriela about how they sabotaged their relationship, so Troy decides to show up to Gabriela's house to talk to her. Actually, he kind of breaks into her home. It's so funny how things we thought were romantic as kids in retrospect are just kind of creepy. Like, he just fully entered her home without her permission. He tries to convince her to do the callback with him in the best way he knows how. Eh, it was a little pitchy. So they make up and both decide to do their auditions as well as the big basketball game and the decathlon. So now that both are determined to do the callbacks, Sharpay again feels threatened and devises a plan to have all the events happen at the same time. She convinces Mrs. Darbus to move the callbacks to the same day as the big basketball game and the decathlon. And one, I can't understand Sharpay not wanting anyone else to be the lead in the show, but if she genuinely believes she's that great, Two amateurs auditioning shouldn't make her sweat this much. Like, if you think you're that good of a performer, you shouldn't care who auditions. Also, Mrs. Darbus agreeing to change the date of the callbacks is crazy. Why would she agree to do that? Especially as someone who is such a stickler for time and punctuality, to change the date of the event last minute without any concessions to the performers auditioning is crazy. This plan was so stupid that I'm surprised it worked, because she shouldn't have agreed to do that. Like. That's ridiculous. So anyways, with everything happening on the same day, the Wildcats devise a plan to get both Troy and Gabriella to make their performance. In the meantime, Sharpie and Ryan perform first, and they do bop to the top, which I forgot how much of a banger this was. You know, they've been getting really good songs in this movie. So while Sharpay and Ryan are performing and the basketball game is going on, Taylor sends a code that messes up the scoreboard. With the scoreboard messed up, they pause the game, giving Troy and Gabriella enough time to make the callbacks. Troy and Gabriella just barely make it in time and performs Breaking Free. And I gotta say, I think they did a better job than Sharpay and Ryan. We're breaking free! Like, Bob to the Top was really good, and I can definitely see why they'd beat out Sharpay here. It was honestly just a better performance. Anyways, after their performance, Troy and the team win their basketball game, and Gabriella wins her decathlon, and they're both gonna be the leads in the school musical. And that's it. Troy and Gabriella get a happy ending, and they wrap it up with a performance of We're All In This Together. And bro, the choreography for this number is insane. This joint right here? Hold on, let me play that back. Like, are you kidding me? Absolutely deserve that Emmy for choreography. And that's it. 
that's the first movie. And honestly, I definitely thought Sharpay did a lot worse. She did overstep a lot, and she was very clearly insecure about not being the school musical lead. So she signed Gabriella up for the decathlon team without her permission, and she had the date of the callback changed so that Troy and Gabriella wouldn't be able to audition. That's basically it. Which, yeah, those aren't great, but I still think that it was pretty tame. Like, I wouldn't necessarily feel comfortable calling her a villain. She was definitely the antagonist of this movie, but not necessarily the bad guy, you know? Especially because at the end, she seemed fine with the fact that she didn't get the lead. Like, she accepted it for what it was. Yeah, she's a little mean in this one. Not necessarily the nicest, warmest person. And that, I think, is her biggest offense in this movie. Just the way she treats everyone, even her brother. But overall, I'd say she's not only had less to do in this movie than I initially thought she did, but the things she did, while selfish, never truly felt overly malicious. I gotta be honest, Chad and Taylor's plan felt more nefarious than Sharpay's because not only were they trying to prevent them from auditioning for the musical, they also broke them up as a couple and really hurt them. So to me, their plan was so much more egregious than Sharpay asking Mrs. Darvis to change the date of the callback. And it's still so crazy to me that she agreed to that. Like, that was insane. So at this point, I think Sharpay is definitely the antagonist, but I'm not comfortable calling her a villain or a victim just yet. So right now, she's in the middle. But let's look at the other movies and see where she falls. I haven't watched High School Musical 2 in a very long time, so I was very excited to revisit it for this video because it was definitely my favorite in the trilogy. We start the movie with our group in the homeroom, counting down the seconds to their summer vacation. This was such an iconic moment. I remember after this movie dropped, our whole class would do this. We would count down and be like, summer, summer summer on the last day of school this led us into the opening number what time is it you know what high school musical 2 to me feels like they looked at the first movie and said how can we make this better in every conceivable way? Because this is actually insane. This opening is so amazing. I remember why this was my favorite one in the trilogy because it just goes so much harder than the opening for the first one. Down to the choreography of them replicating ticking clocks. Are you kidding me? This is just objectively a really good good song and opener. I will never not be impressed by choreography implementing basketballs, because how do you think of this? So anyways, the East High group are very excited for summer to say the least, and they're all looking for summer job opportunities. Troy gives Gabriella a gift to symbolize their everlasting love for each other, or maybe it's just a necklace with the initials of his name. I also find it hilarious how every time Troy and Gabriella share a romantic moment, the rest of the entire cast are just standing up awkwardly watching them as if they're watching a movie. Like, can you guys guys disperse, this isn't a show. Anyways, Troy, through some fortuitous luck, gets a job opportunity to work at an exclusive club and gets jobs for everyone in the class. We learn shortly, however, that this was a plot by Sharpay to get closer to Troy by having him work at the country club she stays at every summer. And it's like, to what end? It's definitely weird that she's still trying to pursue Troy romantically, considering he's now dating Gabriella, but whatever I guess. We then get the absolute hit that is fabulous and one thing that we notice immediately that Sharpay's characterization has definitely changed since the first movie. She's definitely a lot more campy, more in your face over the top, egotistical, very Paris Hilton, even down to her driving a pink car. The fabulous sequence definitely highlights this as Sharpay thinks about how she wants everything and everything she wants needs to be fabulous. Anyways, Troy and the whole crew pulls up to start working, to which Sharpay is not happy about. Apparently, Sharpay's mother approved the rest of the class working there, even though Sharpay's plan was only to have Troy be there so they could possibly start a romantic relationship. She instructs Mr. Fulton to make the rest of the East High students' time there so miserable that they would want to quit. Suddenly, the class aren't so enthused to be working there anymore. But after another banger, Troy was able to get them all on the same page and motivated to start working there. I just want to point out that so far, we are three for three. All these songs are so good. The first movie is definitely standing in this one shadow because these songs and choreography go so hard. So Troy takes Gabriella on a picnic date and they discuss their future and Troy is worried about getting a scholarship to get into college. And I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time believing Troy's parents would struggle to pay his college tuition. Look at this guy's house. Anyways, Sharpay is now fully spying on them. She's completely gone off the deep end. She makes the staff turn on the sprinklers on them, which I don't get why she thought that would mess up their date. If anything, it made it more atmospheric and romantic. And I mean, we did get this line. You are gonna get so 
That had to have been intentional. There's just no way. Anyways, they get in trouble with Mr. Fulton for being on the golf course. Well, Gabriella gets in trouble because Troy is basically untouchable. Meanwhile, Kelsey starts writing songs in preparation for the talent show that the staff can participate in. And Troy's immediately like, no. He says the school musical was a one-time thing. And see, this is why I say I just don't buy that Troy's that passionate about musical theater or performing. It just seems like a thing that he's casually interested in. Anyway, Kelsey shows them her song, You Are the Music in Me, and they sing the song. And boy, we are 4 for 4 in this movie. This song is so good. Again, the other members of the cast does this weird thing where they see Gabriel and Troy sharing a moment and just awkwardly watch and sneak in. Anyways, it's a really good song and Kelsey convinces all of the others to participate in the talent show. Ryan reports back to Sharpay about the Wildcats' intention to participate in the talent show and she hatches a plan to steal Troy away for herself. Troy and Chad work as caddies for Sharpay and her family and during the course of the golf course, Troy impresses Sharpay's dad, so much so that he invites him out to have dinner with them that night. Sharpay's dad is on the board of the University of Albuquerque, a school Troy is interested in, so they tell him that they can offer him some opportunities at a scholarship. It also comes out that Troy is a really good singer, so Sharpay makes him promise her that he would perform with her in the talent show in front of everybody, including her parents. So of course, Troy says yes. While all of this is happening, Troy is really, really late for his date with Gabriella. But he stalled again when Sharpay steals him away to show him her performance for the talent show. And wow, we've officially gotten our first miss. I have no recollection of this song or this sequence whatsoever. And that's when I realized I was watching the extended version of this movie with additional scenes sprinkled in. And this was one of them. So this was actually my first time watching this scene and hearing the song. And you know... It was played for comedy, but I do not like this song. Cultural appropriation aside, I just felt that it was really gaudy and tacky, even for Sharpay. Like, it didn't seem like the song she would sing. It doesn't really fit her aesthetic. <laughs> Anyways, throughout the performance, she tries to incorporate Troy, although apparently those are Ryan's part that she was given to Troy, and he hates it. I've never seen Ryan so animated. I love it. Anyways, after the performance, Troy advises Sharpay to make the performance a little simpler and stripped down, and she agrees. Troy manages to sneak away to finally make his date with Gabriella. They swim in the pool and share a sweet moment, but again, Gabriella gets in trouble for being in the pool after hours. But not Troy. No, Troy gets promoted because of Sharpay and is officially separated from the rest of the Wildcats. He gets special privileges with his promotion, including his own golf cart. He is now training kids to golf, including Sharpay, surprisingly, although she clearly doesn't need it. Anyways, Sharpay's dad introduces Troy to some pro basketball players from the University of Albuquerque, and he very quickly starts developing an ego, treating his friends like staff and not making in time for them or Gabriella. Sharpay steals Gabriella and Troy's songs from Kelsey to perform in the talent show, which means dumping the Hula Hula song and Ryan. She completely cuts Ryan off from the show so she can perform with Troy. It's getting a little harder to defend Sharpay here. Meanwhile, Troy continues to dish his friends to hang out with the pro basketball players, and now that Ryan got dumped, he hangs out with the East High gang. Since Troy is too busy with the pro basketball players and Sharpay, Gabriella thinks Ryan can help them put on a really good show, but Chad isn't so easily convinced and wants Ryan to prove himself. And okay, recently, there's been this thing where people say that Chad and Ryan had a lot of sexual tension, particularly in this scene. And honestly, like I said, I haven't watched this movie in years, but rewatching it now, I gotta say, those people had a point. <laughs> like, there's so much overt sexual tension in this sequence. You got game? Little? <laughs> They're fucking each other! Why are you looking at him like that? Oh my god! So much to the point that I don't see how I didn't recognize any of this before. It all culminated in them performing I Don't Dance. So, dance here is a metaphor for gay sex, with Ryan trying to convince Chad that he'll enjoy it, and Chad being like, no, I don't do that. I don't dance, I know you can, not a chance. So they sing and dance it out with lyrics such as, hey better better hey better better swing, you'll never know if you'll never try, Take your best shot, just hit it. I'll show you how I swing. You're talking a lot. Show me what you got. Oh, they were hitting it raw. They're fucking! <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's just, I can't unsee it now. Wow. So, sexual attention aside, this is also just another really great song. And the choreographer for this is also really creative and impressive. And this is my favorite sequence in the entire song. 
Wow, this movie is just really the best in the trilogy without a doubt. Anyways, the song seemingly ends with Chad giving in and giving it a try. So you call that a little game? Little League World Series Newport, Rhode Island. Like, what? Also, they're wearing each other's clothes. Bro. They're fucking each other! Meanwhile, Troy's super busy hanging out with the pro basketballers and keeps missing dates with Gabriella. Then there was this moment where they were kinda implying that Ryan was some kind of threat to Troy and Gabriella's relationship. I don't know, Troy. I don't think you have anything to worry about. Now, Taylor. She needs to keep an eye out. Chad and Troy get into a heated argument that only further divides Troy from the rest of the gang. And he goes off with Sharpay to rehearse the new version of the song. And I gotta be honest, it's okay, but the slowed down version with Troy and Gabriella is better. There are definitely songs that work better up tempo. I think this one works better strips down. So anyways, after the rehearsal, Troy freaks out and is having a difficult time getting it together. He sees the Wildcats rehearsing their performance and having fun and he feels left out. Sharpay is also really mad that Ryan is helping them out and now tries to make it seem that they were a team all along, even after she dumped him. She then orders Mr. Fulton to change the rules of the talent show to prevent the staff from participating. Gabriella finally has enough and confronts Sharpay about her meddling with everything. Gabriella lets her know that if Troy is the prize she's trying to win, that's fine, but she will not be participating. And some people like to make fun of Gabriella for this moment, but she kinda has a point. Troy and Gabriella then have a talk, where she lets him know that she's done and she's going home. And we get the amazing power ballad, Gotta Go My Own Way. Bro, every song in this movie is like an upgrade from the previous version, because this is so much better than When There Was Me and You. It's so good. Also, this moment... What about us? What about everything we've been through? Amazing. Troy is all torn up about Gabriella leaving and doesn't know what to do. He finds out that his friends can't participate in talent show and would get the absolute banger bet on it. He's so melodramatic in this one and that's what makes it so amazing. He really kills the performance and then he hits this note. All I gotta do is leave. Oh, we've come a long way from lip syncing over Drew Steely's vocals. With renewed motivation, he confronts Sharpay and drops out of the talent show. Sharpay is desperate and tries to revive her Honolulu performance and get Ryan to do the performance with her. Although, unfortunately, at that point, he's also over her shit, so he drops out on her too. Ryan, still sympathetic, asks Troy to perform with his sister so she doesn't get embarrassed. Troy agrees to sing with her only if she allows the Wildcats to do the show too. She agrees, though she admits she wished he was doing it just for her. I don't know why she think that after everything she's done, but sure. Ryan sabotages it though after he said that he didn't want to see his sister crash and burn and makes Troy learn a new song every day, cutting Sharpay completely from the performance. Troy performs the new song and surprise, Gabriela's back to perform the song with him. This song is really good. It's no breaking free though, I still think that song is better, but this comes very close and it's a good follow up to that song. The Wildcats join them on stage and Troy even invites Sharpay to join in the moment and they give a killer performance and the whole crowd gets into it. At the end of it, Sharpay awards Ryan the award as a show of good faith, which honestly, that was pretty sweet. At the end, Troy and Gabriella finally share a kiss. You guys have no idea how as kids, how long we waited just to see them share a kiss because they didn't kiss in the first one. We get our final song and it's definitely no all in this together, but all for one is still a jam. Also, some of you may remember on DisneyChannel.com, we got the chance to vote for a special star to have a cameo in the movie. Now, I never voted. I didn't even know this was a thing, honestly, until afterwards. But you guys voted for Miley Cyrus and we got like a two second clip of her in the movie. Which, okay, I guess. I definitely feel like it should have been more. Maybe even like a speaking role. But yeah, that's the movie. That's how it ends. I can see why this was my favorite for so long. Also, just the decision to have the sequel take place during the summer vacation was a stroke of genius. Whoever idea that was deserves a raise. So many times with sequels, we see it just being the first movie but with different stakes. They could have so easily just make there be another big musical that Troy and Gabriella are competing against Sharpay for, but taking them out of the school and having it be during summer was a good choice. Anyway, Sharpay was definitely on 11 for this one. I actually feel way more comfortable calling her a villain in this one because she went out of her way not only to get Troy there but also to make the rest of the Wildcats time there as miserable as possible. It's also really sketchy to me for her to want to break up Troy and Gabriella so she can be with him and it wasn't even coming from a sincere place like Sharpay doesn't actually care about Troy I see so many people defend her actions saying she got so many great opportunities for Troy to get him into college and advance his career and Gabriella did nothing 
But Sharpay didn't do any of that out of the goodness of her heart or from sincerely wanting to see Troy excel and grow. She did all of that just to further manipulate him into doing what she wanted, which was to perform in the talent show and then maybe even down the line be with her. It's not like Sharpay cares about Troy's basketball career. Her whole interest in Troy really stems from the fact that Troy is the most popular boy in school and she thinks she's the most popular girl in school, so it would make sense that they would be together. Sure, she probably thinks he's cute, but Sharpay doesn't actually like Troy. She doesn't care about his interests or his wants. She only wants him because it only further helps bolster her own image. So she went full villain in her efforts to steal Troy from Gabriella, spying on them, sabotaging them, getting Gabriella in trouble, and Gabriella only confronted her about it after she prevented the Wildcats from also performing in the talent show after they were already rehearsing and practicing for the show. I actually felt like Gabriella was extremely patient with both Sharpay and Troy because honestly, I would have snapped away earlier. So yeah, Sharpay was unequivocally the villain in this one and I understand her being insecure and not wanting Troy and Gabriella to perform in her talent show because it would steal spotlight from her. And you know, the talent show and performing is her thing so I can see how it would feel unfair, the thing you work so hard at getting co-opted by by people who don't really have a great appreciation for it in the first place. But the links that Sharpay went through just to keep her spotlight, even throwing Ryan, her loyal servant, under the bus, doesn't justify the end. All of that just to sing with Troy, of all people? No. So for this one, she's getting a naughty star. Now let's look at the final movie. High School Musical 3. High School Musical 3. Senior Year. So High School Musical 2 was a massive hit. Like, it destroyed every record. It premiered to 17.2 million viewers, making it, at the time, the most watched basic cable telecast. The previous record holder was an ESPN basketball game broadcast. That's how big this movie was. It beat out sports. The soundtrack debuted on the Billboard Hot 200 with over 600,000 copies sold. It also won an AMA and was even the best-selling album of 2007. Like, for the entire year. Like, across all genres. That's insane, especially for a Disney Channel property. So with the massive success of High School Musical 2, Disney decided to up the budget and do a full theatrical release of the third movie. High School Musical 3 ran in theaters instead of premiering on the Disney Channel like its predecessors. Cause, you know, any way to make more money. I remember being so mad that the movie wasn't gonna air on the network that I actually never even saw it in theaters. I only watched it years later. That's how mad I was. It ended up earning $252 million across its theatrical run against a budget of 11 million dollars so safe to say it was pretty successful i guess they didn't need my money to return a profit this installment is the one i remember the least of all though i only think i watched it once and like i said i didn't even watch it for the first time until years after it had come out so i don't remember a lot of plot details or songs i do remember not liking it as much as the other ones but i do remember i want it all because that was my favorite song but overall this is really just like watching it for the first time for me so i'm curious to see how i came out of it so the movie starts smack in the middle of a heated basketball game. It's the last game of the season and the team is losing bad. And I'm already bored. This was such an interesting opener for the movie in my opinion. It does underpin that this is the end. You know, it's the last game of the season. It's almost over. This is the last movie. But also, the song being played throughout the game doesn't really lend itself to the kind of gravitas that we got in the second movie's opener. But it did give us this moment. <laughs> So we do have to be grateful for that. Still definitely not as good as what time is it. So the team wins miraculously and there are a huge party at Troy's house to celebrate. Troy and Gabriella share a moment in his childhood treehouse and we find out that Gabriella got into Stanford University, which is far away from Albuquerque. And we get another song right here, right now. And I do not remember this song at all. It's sweet, it's okay, but I don't know, they've definitely had more charismatic duets. It's also kind of short. Anyways, Troy's mom kicked them out of the treehouse and I keep forgetting that Troy has a mom for some reason. I think it's because we hardly see her and also I think I headcanoned that Gabriela's mom and Troy's dad liked each other. I have no idea why. I don't think we ever even see them speak with each other but for some reason I thought that was a thing. Anyways, we're back at East High and Sharpay makes her grand entrance. I love how her locker just gets more and more ridiculous as the movies goes on. A new British exchange student signs up to be Sharpay's assistant 
assistant for the rest of the semester, and she's fully familiar with her schedule in a not so creepy way whatsoever. In the homeroom, Taylor announces the prom theme is the last waltz, and Sharpay, as the head of the drama club, announces potential performances for the semester, including her doing a one woman show. So Kelsey signs up the whole Wildcats team to make sure that doesn't happen. Initially, everyone is hesitant and doesn't want to do it because they're busy, but Gabriella and Troy convince them to do it. The musical is called Senior Year and will be about all the students in their final year at high school. Mrs. Darbus announces that Juilliard, a prestigious performing arts university, is concerning four scholarships for East High students, Sharpay, Ryan, Kelsey, and Troy? Troy didn't apply, but somebody submitted an application with his name. He's never even heard of Juilliard. Mrs. Darbus advises them to think about their future. Troy is unsure about his future, but Sharpay is very sure of her future. We get the best song of the movie, possibly of the entire franchise, I Want It All. Sharpay and Ryan perform a show-stopping performance, the theatrics, the set pieces, the choreography. This is where all their budget went. The climax is my favorite part of this entire song. So Sharpay decides that she has to get the best song for the musical if they want a good chance of getting into Juilliard. Knowing that Kelsey would write the best song for Troy and Gabriella, she convinces Ryan to seduce Kelsey to get the song for them so they can perform it. Meanwhile, Gabriella is waiting on an early acceptance program from Stanford, meaning she would leave for college early and would miss the rest of the school year. She meets up with Troy and he asks her out to prom, and then they sing Can I Have This Dance, which I actually remembered and I really like it. It's so much better than the first song they did. Troy and Chad pranks the new guys on the team and gets them into trouble so now they have to help with the stage musical and that'll be important later i promise so troy is still torn up about what to do about his future juilliard or basketball at the university of albuquerque and i still don't get why <laughs> we are three movies in and i still don't get why troy is so torn up about this i'm sorry i just don't buy that musical theater is that important to him. Like, there's a difference between having a hobby and liking singing and seriously wanting to be a theater performer. And there just not have been enough evidence over these three movies to support the idea that Troy is passionate about theater. Whatever. So Chad, after many field attempts, acts out Taylor, and then we get the song Night to Remember. I remember this song going viral on TikTok a couple months back. Night of nights. I really like this song, especially the juxtaposition between the girls being really excited about the prom and the guys dreading it. Also, they're really trying to get us to bad the Ryan and Kelsey romance, but we won't forget. Also, I love that this song within the context of the movie is a performance for the musical they're doing. Like, it's a musical within a musical. So Gabriella is accepted into the early entrance program at Stanford, and Sharpay's goons overhears this and lets her know. If Gabriella attends the orientation, that would mean that she misses the show, giving Sharpay an opportunity to take her part. Sharpay prints out the info, and if there's one thing Sharpay's gonna do, it's print out a document and expose some stuff. Ryan acts out Kelsey to the prom, I don't know why, and they rehearse the song they have for Gabriella and Troy, I Just Wanna Be With You. Which honestly, it's a good song. I like it. Then we get a pretty weird sequence with Troy and Chad. They sing a song, The Boys Are Back, which doesn't really move the plot forward. It's just a song we have about how they're best friends and will always be best friends. There was definitely cool moments throughout the song, like when they were younger versions of themselves, but I feel like this whole sequence could have been cut. It doesn't push the narrative forward, but it's cool, I guess. I don't know, so far the music isn't as great as the previous ones, especially from High School Musical 2. So Gabriella is contemplating not going to Stanford at all, so she can stay in Albuquerque with Troy, which is just so crazy to me. Like, get your life together. Meanwhile, Troy is still struggling over his choice of what to do with his future. Sure. Sharpay lets Troy know that Gabriella got early acceptance into Stanford, which means she's leaving sooner than he thought. Which, like, yeah, that was definitely not her place, but she didn't put Gabriel in Stanford. I think Sharpie has grown since the last movie because this isn't even like a plan. She just passed on public information to everyone else. Anyways, Troy talks to Gabriella and convinces her to go off to Stanford. And then we get Walk Away. And yeah, this is no gotta go your own way. They're definitely trying to replicate the songs from the other movies, but they're just not as great. Anyways, Gabriella goes off to Stanford and with that, Sharpie is officially taking her place in the musical. Troy lets his dad know that he's contemplating going to Juilliard and his dad does not understand understand why. And you know what, Coach Bolton? I don't get it either. The fact that this is the central theme of Troy's arc in this movie is crazy because he doesn't even seem to care that much about the musical that they're doing right now. So I don't buy that this guy really wants to be in theater. But whatever, we get another melodramatic Troy Bolton lament, this time with Scream. And you know what, I actually like this one. The choreography was kind of reminiscent of Janet Jackson, and we did get some cool visual shots. I think I feel like this is a good place to 
Scream? Wait, so did she see him dancing? Like, that wasn't all just in his head? He was actually singing and dancing? I don't know why, but I found that hilarious. Which is why I submitted an application in your name to Juilliard. It was you. Anyways, with Gabriella gone, the whole team are struggling to go on with the performance. For some reason. I don't get why Gabriel was such an integral part of the show. I get that they're sad about her not being there, but come on. Anyways, Gabriela lets Troy know that she's not coming back for prom, graduation, or the musical because it's too hard to say goodbye to everyone over and over again. So Troy makes the smart decision to drive all the way over to her to Stanford just to see her. And he's just hanging out in a tree for some reason. He wanted to spend prom with her, so he ditched the actual prom to dance with her in the park. And honestly, it is really sweet. I am kind of rooting for them. With Troy gone, it means that they have to put on his understudy in his place for the performance, and the Julia representatives are there, so we got our built-in conflict. So anyways, the show starts, and why are these guys trying to push this on me? I'm not buying it. And we get to what was supposed to be Gabriella and Troy's part, but his understudy is having a little trouble, and then this happens. Oh, Troy and Gabriella arrives just in time to save the day. Yay. Then Sharpay finds out that Tiara, her understudy, was just using her to leverage her way into the drama department and run the school. So Troy and Gabriella do their performance, we get this insane hair flip moment, and everyone is completely blown away. The Julia reps are super impressed, they get on their feet, and the whole Wildcats join the performance and give a show-stopping performance. But at the last minute, Sharpay is determined to get her spotlight back. I also just love how this actress sings. <laughs> Let's dance. <laughs> Anyways, Sharpay barges in on the performance. It's kind of chaotic and she doesn't really get her moment to shine. And then the musical ends. So that's it. We find out that Kelsey won the Juilliard scholarship for writing the musical. And they were so impressed that they're also awarding another scholarship to Ryan for choreography. Sharpay got accepted to the University of Albuquerque in performing arts. And she's returned to East High to help with the drama department. For some reason. Anyways, and now for the moment of truth. What this whole trilogy has been leading up to. What will Troy do? So he decides to do both basketball and theater. And the whole crowd is touched. His mom even starts crying and I'm like, okay, sure. So he decides to go to Berkeley in California to be closer to Gabriella. And apparently Gabriella is pre-law, which is kind of crazy because I always thought she was a science math genius. Never thought she would actually be doing law, but okay, sure. So at graduation, Troy gives a speech, which I don't know why. I thought only valedictorians and salutatorians give speeches, but we got Troy giving us a speech about how we'll be friends forever and we're all in this together. And we get our final number. And I gotta say this moment right here, it was pretty cool. I gotta give them that. I actually really like this closing number. I think it did a really good job of closing off everything. I actually got a little emotional at the end. Like, wow, it's really over. Now let's get to the bad stuff. This movie really pissed me off so bad. First off, Sharpay was surprisingly hardly in this one. Like, she had less screen time than in the last one, and she didn't really do anything. Like, she didn't do anything at all. She 100% overstepped her place by telling Troy about Gabriella. That wasn't her place, but Gabriella already got in. Like, Sharpay had nothing to do with that. Troy was gonna find out anyways. So, I don't really think she did anything bad in this one. She wasn't even that mean. She definitely dialed it down since the last one. But after this movie ended, I kind of felt sorry for her. I think this was the best example example of why people would think Sharpay was a victim. And I understand why it's so complicated for people to put her in a box and why there are so many conflicting ideas about whether or not she's the villain or the victim. Because I would go as far as to say she wasn't even the antagonist in this movie. Out of all of the other Wildcats, she was the only one that really cared about the final musical. The others didn't even sign up. Kelsey had to force them to do it. So it does leave a sour feeling that the only person who really, 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 really wanted to do the musical wasn't even able to get her moment in the show. It was completely usurped by the Troy and Gabriella show. She got completely shut out. And again, yes, she wanted to be the star, but it's not her fault Gabriella got in. She just had the opportunity and she wanted to do it. Also, her going to the University of Albuquerque? Really? I do really like that Kelsey and Ryan got the scholarship. Like I said, I think Kelsey is the most talented person in this school for being able to write these musicals, but they couldn't send Sharpay to another prestigious performing university. I'm fine that she didn't get into Juilliard, but she could still go to NYU or UCLA or something. There's just something about the decision to keep Sharpay in Albuquerque that really rubs me the wrong way. It's almost like the writers are punishing her, but she didn't do anything wrong this time. Also her going back to East High to help Mrs. Darbus with the drama club? 
Why? It's as if every other character gets to move on and do something great and pursue their dreams, but Sharpie is stuck where she's always been, helping out with her high school drama club. I think I especially hate it just because out of everyone in the cast, she was the most passionate about performing. A lot of it did come from an egotistical place of wanting to be the center of attention and a star, but her talent is undeniable. She deserves the chance to go for her dreams. Also, I'm not trying to bash the University of Albuquerque. The school shut down in the 80s anyways, so them even even going there was just made up for the movie, but Sharpay deserves better. I don't care. I know she's done terrible things. In the second movie, she was a straight up villain. But I gotta say, I do agree with the critique that it feels partisan to have two people who have a nominal interest in the theater at best constantly taking shine on opportunities from someone who dedicates their life to theater. Sharpay wasn't struggling with her choice, she knew exactly who she was and what she wanted to do. I'm just so glad that they didn't give Troy the Juilliard scholarship, I would have fully lost my mind. So you know what? I'm putting her as a victim for this one. Also, I can't reiterate enough how much it bothers me that they tried to make Troy choosing between theater and basketball a thing, when it was so obvious he didn't care that much about theater. I don't even buy that he cares that much about basketball. Really, the only thing we ever see Troy be super passionate about is Gabriella. So the whole plot of him being so torn up about having to make this impossible choice between two worlds that he loved so much never made any sense to me. So now that we're at the end, what is the definitive answer? Is Sharpay a villain or a victim? And it's complicated. So there's definitely a lot of nuance here. Sharpay has acted selfishly and a lot of her actions are driven behind one to be the star. She doesn't want anyone else in the spotlight but her. And if anyone tries to take that away from her, she'll go to some pretty extreme lengths to stop them. Even her brother. But in the first movie, while she wasn't being selfish and mean, I still think her plan was more of a matter of inconvenience. Like, it was set up to not allow Troy and Gabriella to do the callbacks, but Taylor and Chad's plan was downright evil. Like, they weren't only trying to stop the auditions, but also to break them up. I actually felt that their plan was a lot worse than Sharpay's plan in terms of impact. So, I wasn't fully comfortable calling her a villain, but she definitely wasn't a victim either. In the second movie, she was a straight up villain. No pretense whatsoever, she's conniving, brutal, hard even to her brother. Like, she was putting out all the stops to not get outstaged. And even then, I kind of felt sorry for her at the end. It's kind of like Ryan said, she was definitely way out of line, but I don't take great pleasure in watching Sharpay crash and burn. And I think that has a lot to do with her characterization. Sharpay is very egotistical, but she's also self-assured, driven, and singularly motivated. That you can't help but feel drawn to her. She actually has a lot of charisma, and there are moments of softness that shines through when she lets her guard down. So as bad as she is, you still kind of want to see her win. In the third movie though, she was done so dirty. I feel like Sharpay almost learned her lesson at the end of High School Musical 2 after they took pity on her and included her. She still has that self-centered persona and still wants to be the sole star, but she's not going out of her way to sabotage anyone anymore. So it's frustrating to see her still get dumped on. When she's in the wrong, she gets dumped on. And when she's not, she still gets dumped on. Like, why won't they just let her win? Out of all of the characters, her ending was the most unsatisfying to me. Because it felt like the movie was determined to keep her in the same spot. Never allowing her to win and move on and grow, even at the end. Now, there was a spin-off sequel, Sharpie's Fabulous Adventure. I'm not going to include that here because this video is just about her portrayal in the High School Musical trilogy, but they did try to course correct and give her a happy ending in this one. She moves to New York City and eventually gets to star on Broadway. So Sharpie got her happy ending, I just wish she got it in the original trilogy. So. Is Sharpay the villain? The victim? She's kind of both at the same time. At some points, she's clearly the villain, and at other points, I'd say she's the victim. There's no concrete answer that I can come up with because it's just more nuanced than that. She has moments where she's definitely the aggressor, and other moments where she kind of deserved better. So honestly, if you think she's the villain, fine. If you think she's the victim, okay. I think she's both. She definitely has evolved a lot over the course of the trilogy. So however you feel about Sharpay, you know what? You might be valid. You might have a point. So there you have it. Sharpay Evans, the elusive, complicated chartreuse. Let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think Sharpay was the villain, victim, or a little bit of both? Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.